My name is Terminology. Uh, I'm from Lawrence, Massachusetts. If you don't know, that's about 30 minutes from Boston. Uh, I'm a rapper and also own my own record label. It's called ST Records. I'm currently independent right now. Um, putting out uh, records by my group, ST The Squad, and also I put out my own music, Terminology. Got a website, terminologymusic.com. And uh, pretty much that's the movement, man. That's what we're doing right now. I've been rapping just for the love of hip hop, because I love hip hop music, you know what I'm saying? Uh, since a young kid, around nine years old, there was a lot of people in my area that rap. You know, my mom's boyfriend was a street hustler. You know, he just kicked rounds for the fun of it, in front of the in front of the crib while he was doing his thing, hustling and whatnot. And they all just freestyled off the top of the brain. And just, you know, I used to just kind of kick it around and, and they'd be like, go ahead, bust the flow, bust the flow. So, you know, I started rhyming around nine and just never stopped, you know what I mean? It turned into a career. I think I was like 14, 15 when I started actually recording records, you know, going to uh, my man's basement and recording records and just actually making demos. We, we had a demo, you know what I'm saying? We were like maybe 14, 15 and our main objective in life was to get it to, to Crumb Snatcher because he's the hero, you know, of Lawtown. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I'm talking about like way back, maybe like 96, you know what I mean? 97, and uh, that was just our thing. We wanted to get it to Chrome and hopefully get in the source, get unsigned hype. That was all we wanted to do was just get props and, and be professional musician rappers, you know what I'm saying? So we went from that to actually living the dream. Cause I always had a lot of family and strong teams behind me. It started out with me and my cousin Gutter, really. Just me and Gutter and my man Jonah. That was our first original crew. You know what I mean? Then we, then everybody kind of went separate ways. And I'm talking about 12, 11, 12 years old, you know what I mean? Then 13, 14, got with this click, 3Ds, like all fan. And then, you know, eventually we turned into ST. ST the squad when we was like, I don't know, 15, you know, I'd say like 16, 17. And we've been that ever since the family, you know what I mean? For the last 10 years. So, you know, they behind me and whatnot, but I'm definitely the man in the front, you know, making it happen. And any, I mean, any time I get a chance to give them an opportunity or put them on, I will. They're part of the movement. We all move together. Every year, you know, something would happen that would that would make me be like, wow, I'm making it, you know? Like in high school, uh, like G-Spin played my record on Gemma 94.5. And I'm in high school, you know, walking around in school and everybody, yo, I heard you on the radio last night. You know what I mean? And it's like, it was such a, a major thing to me. Like, I had left school and went on tour with Detonator Records for a couple weeks, took time out of high school to go do that. And like, you know, that type of, when I when I started doing that, I was like, yeah, this is gonna be my career no matter what. You know what I mean? I, I drove all the way Atlanta to Atlanta for a three minute set. You know, back in those days, now I'm in Europe doing an hour set by myself with a packed club to come to see me. So, see how the tables are turned. But there was a lot of things in between that was like step to step. I had a record deal with Detonator Records when I was young. You know, me and Ed Rock had a record deal with uh, with Centerfield Records before that. After that, we signed with Crumb Snatcher. You know, after that, I ended up making ST Records, which is, you know, my own label, because things were never going right with any label. I was never a priority. And once I made that, started making things really happen and met up with Static and Static introduced me to the industry and really took me to the next level, like, you know, more, cause I was local, I was Boston, I was in Lawrence, only here. And then, you know, Static helped me really broaden out New York and get me on the radio and Dan Green, my manager. And then it was like, really, you know, like wildfire. This year has been, you know, probably my busiest year. I've been uh, to Europe six times this year. I've toured Europe six, uh, separate times this year in 2009. I'm about to leave Wednesday again for another 20 day tour. I was out there with Static, I was out there with Premier, I was out there with MOP. I just keep going back, you know what I mean? Back, back, and every time I go there, you know, I tear it down, I, I make a better reputation for myself, I further prove myself to a real hip hop audience and they keep wanting me back, which is a blessing. And then 2008, I did 100 shows, I did a 46 show tour with Red Man and Method Man, opened up for Red and Meth every day, 30, 30 minute set, got to hype the crowd for Red and Meth. I learned a lot from them, you know, also learned a lot from MOP. And then the years before that, I did 700 free shows in the Boston area, you know what I mean, New England, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, all that. And those are the shows that really prepped me to be the man who I am today, because you know what I'm saying? I was faced with a lot of, a lot of problems and just like a lot of headaches and all that, but you know, it's, it's kind of like, it was practice makes perfect and now I'm good, you know what I mean? I just, I work, 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 that's all I do. I say the person who's helped me the most in my career is Static Selector. 
you know, uh, mainly being that we're from the same area and we knew each other before we were, we both weren't nothing. You know what I mean? When I met him and, and, he, met, and he met me, we weren't nothing. You know what I'm saying? We were nothing. We were doing little shows around the way. And we just grinded and, and took it from out of Lawrence and uh, brought it to Boston, which was a big deal for us to get props in Boston, you know? Ed OG from Boston, you know what I'm saying? Uh, Almighty RSO, um, Me Man, Benzino was popping at the time, um, Acrobatic, Mr. Lift, there was a lot of things going on out there. For us, we just wanted to be heard. So for taking it from, from Lawrence to Boston and from Boston to New York and New York to the world, it was a big process. And I'll say Static Selector helped me out a lot with that. And uh, industry-wise, my manager, Dan Green, helped me out with that a lot. Um, Crumb Snatcher helped me out a lot with that. You know what I'm saying? When I first started, yeah, brought me around, introduced me to a few people. And really, like, I think the reason why I get paid as much money as I do to do all these shows, it has to do with DJ Premier, you know what I mean? I owe that all to Primo. He gave me Watch Out Go Down, you know, which is which is mainly the reason why I get paid, you know what I mean, to this day, because that was the explosion, you know, that was the big record that I did. So, you know, I mean, without those key people in my life, who knows where I'd be, you know what I mean? And I always give them props. And there's so many other people that help me too, you know what I mean? I can't name everybody, but M.O.P., you know, Lil Fame, he's like a brother to me. I did like 40 records with him. We got an album coming out together, Physiology, that's Fizzy Womack and Terminology. You know, he helped so much, and Detention helped me so much when I was a kid, just trying to come in. You know, he used to sneak me in to battle people when I was 17 years old, sneak me into Bill's Bar on Lansdowne Street, sneak me into the Milky Way, you know, sneak me into the Middle East and, and all these places where I got my start in the Bean. So it's crazy, man. It's, it's, it, it's ill. So a lot of people help, you know what I'm saying? And now I do the same thing. I give back to my people, you know. I try to help the next man and try to try to help him shine. All the work that I put in is is what I pride myself on, because that's all I have. I don't I don't own a big house, you know. I don't own a, a lot of fancy cars or you know what I'm saying. A lot of things. I, I really don't own much, but what I do have is what a lot of people wish they had, I have respect from the industry and not only the fake industry, but I mean people like Method Man and, and, and Bun B and, and Cassidy and MOP and I don't know, all this, there's a million people, you know, that me and, uh, and Static have toured with that like really genuinely respect us and look up to us and the fans on the street that just stop me and just be like, yo, you're my favorite rapper, you know, there's so many people that, that say that to me and I just seen your video on MTV today or I watched your video on Comcast 10 times today, I kept watching it, I heard you on the radio, I, I bought your album, I can't stop listening to it. I was in London, you know, this dude came up to me, thugged out cat, came up to me and he was like, yo, your song made me cry, you know, your song about your daughter, because I got a daughter and I went through the same thing. You know, and these are these are these are people that our music actually really touches, and the work ethic that we put in, the hard work, and all the records we put in. This is like what we get back from it is that sometimes it's not all the money and and what you know the things that we deserve, but we get we get something else. We we get something that people wish they had. Real props. You know what I mean? Um, but the things that you that you do in hip hop to make money, a lot of times they aren't necessarily the things that you do because you love, it, you know? Like to go do a show somewhere really far on your daughter's birthday, you don't want to do that, so it's not fun. But to make money, you will do it, you know what I mean? And then sometimes I'll just go to Stag's house and we'll make a record playing around and then we'll get mad paper off it. So sometimes, you know, it's, you gotta take the good and the bad, just like any job, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's a nine to five, just like anything else, but for, the love of it and expressing myself, like you said, is what really makes us do it. It's something that, that I wouldn't really like advise doing, but if you're gonna do it and you wanna be a rapper or a producer or you know own your own label, just know that you know the work you put in is, is what you're gonna get back. You can't just make two or three songs and think like Puff Daddy's gonna show up at your house, you know? It's not like that. You're gonna you have to make some really good music. For one, good music is is the key. You know what I mean? And uh, making yourself look right, presenting yourself the right way. You can't be walking up in a record label smelling like, smelling crazy, looking crazy, no shape up, looking looking wild, you know what I'm saying? You gotta present yourself right, and you know, your music gotta be dope, you gotta have the right sound. Try not to sound like nobody else as much as you can. And you know, get on the net, the net is major right now, go hard. You know, there's so many more things I could tell you, but those are some really key things. J and D, man, you know what I'm saying? J and D Productions, you know what it is. Terminology. That's
see the squad, Lawtown, Queen Town, murder, let's go.